Okay, so what I want to do is a quick, quick overview of UV layout with the simplest objects possible. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make kind of a uh, plane. <clears throat> and um, so I got this plane, right? I'll go in and freeze the transformations, kill the history. Okay, and I'm gonna apply material to it. For this tutorial, I'm gonna use Redshift. I got a little Redshift shelf and there's redshift material. I can just hit the button, it puts a redshift material on the object. And if I look, I've been horsing around with some stuff here, redshift, I just close down some of the menus just so you can just see color. If I hit the, oops, the map button, just going outside of the little recording space, and I put on a file texture. Okay, and image name, I gotta go browsing. And I've got some stuff already kind of set up here. I've gotten to my downloads. I'm gonna grab the floor tile. <clears throat> okay, and I don't see anything. Okay, so remember that four is for wireframe, five is for shaded, and six will show you your textures, so it should show up. Okay, um, remember when I created that material, I had this object selected when I created the redshift material in case there's some kind of problem. Four, five, and six, or if you go to shading and you turn on hardware texturing here. Okay, two different places to do it. Actually, a third one is this little button right here. Okay, it says textured, not to be confused with use default material, which will put a gray default shader on everything. You don't want that. Okay, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look under UVs here, and there's the UV editor. Um, I have a tendency not to like the little toolkit. Okay, I think it takes up too much visual real estate, and I preferred what they had before up here in the top. It's a preference of mine. Um, and what I've got on here is, uh, first off, there's a little button for your texture so you can see it off and on. And over here, there's a little thing called dim image. And I can go and play with the dim image button and play with the slider. Whenever you have the object selected, the UV show up. If you don't have it selected, they disappear. If I go in and I double click on a UV, it'll grab the whole shell of UVs. You can see it moving around over here. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay. And if I grab my scale tool and I zoom out, Okay, you can go in and make these tile outside of the 0 to 1 area. And I can go ahead and I'll grab my rotate tool. And I always kind of do something fancy like this. It's not super necessary to do it like this, but just something just so you kind of see how it works. So I'm using the move and the rotate and whatever. There it is. So that's the simplest object you can lay out UVs for. <clears throat> Next one. Next simplest object. If I go in here and I create a polygon uh, cylinder. And I'll just take this, do a little bit of modeling. Ooh, done. Okay, and I'm just going to go over here and hit F so it frames it. And let's go and do that same thing again. Put a redshift material on this. Let's go down to the material attributes. This pops up. Oh, that is going to be popping on the back here. I like floating menus. Um, just the way my brain works. I like floaty, messy menus all over the place. And now I want a third monitor. Um, and if I go over here to diffuse color, boop, and I go and I pick a file texture, boop, and I grab the map button, and this time around we're going to pick the Alpha Getty. Alpha Getty label. There we go. Um, and if you click on the little swatch, it updates typically. Okay. Um, and I select the object, and you can see some of my UVs are already laid out for me, kind of. So if I go in here and I double click on this, <clears throat> I can grab this little shell and pull it off. And I think that's the top one. Yes. Actually, this one here, it strikes me that, what is it? There's the best before date. Should that be on the top or the bottom? I'll put it on the top. I can't remember anymore. Actually, let's just look. I've got the can over here. It's on the top. Okay. And I scanned it so it's got kind of a funny light source on it. I should have just taken a photo. And I can make it a bit bigger. Great. Um, and then let's go and grab this one. Just double click, get the whole shell, and run with that up here. And I did a thing where I went and I took the the scan and then I just went beyond and, and kind of blurred it a little bit so I could blend in. And I can look underneath the can. And as soon as I do that, the floor is there. And my cursor is acting funny. Okay, great. Kind of center that and find something I'm happy with. Okay, great. 
<clears throat> and then comes the label and again just double click and I get the whole thing I'm just gonna move this down here to the bottom maybe I'll grab those UVs at the top and just pull till I get the label fitting in and then I can grab the scale tool just grab this axis here and make sure you make that noise too when you're doing it it helps okay and done um, and eh, I could probably even go ahead and like I, I always show that once this is in place if I go and I throw in things like uh, let's if we're to poly modeling I'll grab my I don't have the insert edge loop tool on here of course if I go in and grab mesh tools uh, insert edge loop tool and I pop a loop say here and I pop a loop down here okay great um, I can go in and grab this face and double click on that face and I can extrude them uh, the extruding is going to probably cause problems on my UV so I'll probably have to worry about stretching but there I can go ahead and model that a bit more based off of my texture I've got on here grab this one double click extrude <coughs> pull that out a little bit go down here and I can't quite see there double click extrude maybe I'll grab the scale tools and just scale it down a bit there okay and if I was getting really really fussy but this kind of gives me a nice little rim right I could get fussy and go in and take this edge loop and grab the scale tool there okay just to kind of taper it and <clears throat> um, then what else could I do uh, I wasn't gonna do all this stuff what am I doing stop doing this if I go in and use the insert edge loop tool pop a loop um, and then I grab this and I hit uh, relative to multi I put in some more divisions and then if I grab an edge loop here double click grab the scale tool put on soft selection make the soft selection bigger oh yeah and uh, grab the scale tool hold down control right here and I can kind of just to kind of change this up a little bit so it isn't perfect anymore and now it has a better silhouette maybe okay and move the pivot point and I'll just uh, turn off soft selection delete my history and ba boom I got a can okay <coughs> so I'm just gonna move that over here another object what do we at 745 okay let's go in here and create next one polygons I'm gonna do a little bit of modeling scale scale it this way scale it this way and there something like that that looks good um, I'm gonna take this and oh yeah I was gonna try and do this with the redshift Doop. there so I put a redshift material on let's pop that open Doop. I'll put a file texture on just like I've done before and I'm gonna put on <clears throat> the cheddar bunnies crackers everybody loves cheddar bunnies click on the little swatch and it updates um, not that that's super important but for some reason it gives me comfort and if I go in here to the UV editor and this thing does its little stupid thing there um, by the way what I tend to do is I found that I go and unlock this a little lock up in the corner I take this thing and I throw it over to my other monitor so I don't have to see it because it bugs the crap out of me so if you notice that there and I put the lock on again so it can't dock again there's a couple settings on there I want but for the most part it just annoys me <clears throat> um, now remember that the first thing you want to do here is this thing that's going to cause you problems we take a look at all the scale values on this object it wants me to uh, freeze the transformation so that's in the poly modeling the little snowflake here will do it or modify freeze transformations either one whatever you remember and then I can delete the history and if I go into UVs and I hit automatic because it's a boxy thing it's a box boxy um, <clears throat> then I can grab all the UVs grab the move tool and I'll move them out come back and I'll grab these one at a time remember the soft selections on or something like that you might it might grab other objects or other uh, UVs you want to make sure you're grabbing UVs when you do this and I come in and I just double click and it grabs the shell 
And my habit is the lower left hand corner. Grab this, pull it up. Grab those, pull this over. There. And double click. I'll get this one too while I'm at it. <coughs> my voice is going. And I'll pull this up over. And I should be looking at it. Oh, it's freaking upside down. God damn it. Double click. I'm going to grab the rotate tool. I'm going to hold down J. There, rotate around. Good, good, good. And what else do we have? This one It's on the other side over here. Grab the move tool. <coughs> and I'm going to move this into place. Okay, and there we go. And I could make this match up better. You can see potentially little stretchings in here. Somebody's going to wig out on me about this. You didn't do it perfect. Okay, so I'm going to take this and uh, it's got to rotate onto its side. So I'm going to hold down J again. There we go. And there's all that French stuff. What the hell? French. There. Okay, I'll grab these and I'll pull this up. And I'll offend all my Quebecois students. There. And un crackling de Annie's homegrown. Great. And then I'll go in here, double click. And that looks like the bottom. And that's where the UPC code is over here. So I'm just going to grab this and I'll hold down J. Make it right up to the French side. Wah! And then I'll pull this over here. <coughs> Grab this one. This goes on the top. Rotate it. Hold down J. There, there, and whoop, 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 whoop. there. So we've just done it. And we have covered some of the easy primitives. I'll hold down D and V, move my pivot point to the bottom. Damn it! Job at there, got it. And if I hold down V, I can snap it to the floor, move it back over here. I always like to do this because it looks funny. There, I can grab this and make it a duplicate and pull it this way. Ah, forget Okay, so I've got this. Um, <clears throat> and then the final one, the final object, which I consider to be actually the hardest object to lay out UVs for, is the sphere. And um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, let's throw a grid type texture on here. Let's go back to Redshift and boop, hit that. And uh, when I go into the material attributes, it'll pop up. There it is. And I'll put on a grid. And one of my students, Jeremy, uh oh, what's Jeremy's last name? Jeremy Ladner. Jeremy Ladner. I've been saying that I want to make <laughs> a, a UV grid and with kittens all over it. And so what did he do in his spare time? He made me a UV grid with kittens all over it. <laughs> Just took the same one and pasted it all over. There might be copyright issues. We'll find out somehow. I'll get sued for showing it. Okay, so let's go into UVs and I'll go to the UV editor. <clears throat> and let's just select this one object. Now, you can see the little kitten heads. They want to be of equal size here. So I might have to grab my UVs and squish the kitten heads. There. So now those are a nice size. And as we go up here, they get sucked into the black hole and they get stretched and time shortens. Now we've got to figure out where we want to um, cut these to try to make them even. So what I typically do is grab that edge right around here where it starts to really distort. And I'll use the cut sew, cut operation. And you can see that that can pull off my UVs. And um, when I'm doing this, I kind of always like to show um, these options here where uh, I just showed you cut, so I cut things. And if I go over to, say, these edges and I leave this bottom edge alone down here, and I hit sew, it sews them all together. I'm just going to grab the shell, and under modify, there's a thing called unfold. Boop! Turns it into a perfect sphere. And if I'm looking at this, I scale it down. I want to make the kitten's heads of equal size all across the texture. And I'll say right there, 
Okay, so we can see this. I'll spin the little kittens around, do some cat juggling. Okay, so you can see it. And there they are. They're roughly equal size. The texel density is of almost equal size. And I can do the same thing on the bottom. And so I think, <coughs> is it this line? Just trying to figure out where it is from the center. One, two, three, four, five. So go to center line. One, two, three, four, five. So let's take that one right there. And I'll cut it. Another way I can do this too is I could come in here and double click on these faces so I get the whole face shell. If I hit it with UVs and I hit uh, camera base, it sews everything together. And then I grab the UVs and I hit uh, modify, uh, unfold, bloop. And then I just have to scale it till they look like nice little kitties that are getting along. Probably about the same size as the other one. There, now the kitties can share share equal space. I don't know if they like that. It looks like they got a little bit big, so I'm going to have to go and scale them down. Scale them up. Maybe I didn't cut it at exactly the same spot. But <clears throat> the big thing is, you get the idea. I hope. There it is. There's UVs in a nutshell really, really fast. 16 minutes of basic UVs. I'm going to stop here.